Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. Today we're going to continue working with weight, but this time we're going to talk about estimation strategies and how we can kind of estimate the weight of different objects. So our learning goal for today says, I can use estimation strategies to determine the weight of items in kilograms using mental benchmarks. So we're also going to talk about kilograms and grams today in our lesson. Okay, so for this lesson, you don't need any materials. You just have to follow right along with the video. All right, so friends, here is a picture of a spring scale. We can use it to measure the weight of objects. So just when we talked about previously like that pan balance, uh, this is a different type of scale that we can use to measure the weight of objects. The G on this scale right here, that means that it can be used to measure grams. So for this one, we're not measuring kilograms because it's labeled with a G. What would it have to be labeled with if we're measuring with kilograms? Do you guys remember? Kg for kilograms, yeah. So other spring scales measure in kilograms. So you would see the kg on the scale for kilograms. All right, so the scale below shows the weight of a bowl of apples. Each interval on the scale represents one kilogram. So friends, when they say an interval, they're talking about going from that dark black line of zero to the next black line of one, that dark black line. That's an interval. And from one to two is an interval, and from two to three is another interval. So how much does the bowl of apples weigh? What do you think? Look at where that arrow is pointing or that red line. Yeah, three kilograms, right? We know that it's pointing, the red arrow is pointing to the three or the red line, okay? And we know that the scale is measuring in kilograms, so that tells us that it's three kilograms. Where would the arrow point if it weighed one kilogram? Yeah, it would point to the one, awesome. Okay, so now let's find the bag, uh, or find the weight of this bag of rice. Each interval on the scale represents 500 grams. How much does the bag of rice weigh? That's a little tricky because those intervals this time are in hundreds, but it's telling us that the measurement is in kilograms. So just think about what is that number that it's pointing to. Yeah, it's one kilogram. You guys got it. Awesome. Or we could say 1,000 grams, right? Because we know that 1,000 grams is the same as one kilogram. How would the scale show three kilograms? Like if let's say this were to measure three kilograms, where would the line or the arrow be pointing for three kilograms? Yeah, it would point to the three, right? If it was four kilograms, it would point to the four. Okay, so on the scale below, five intervals represent 500 grams. So that means as they're going around, the scale is measuring in grams, and each one of those black lines represents five, or um, I'm sorry, all the way halfway around represents 500 grams. So five of those intervals total represent 500 grams. So all of that right there. How much does one interval represent. So just this guy right here. Maybe 100, some of you are saying, maybe 10, maybe you're not sure. So let's count around. So we were at 100, or let's say if we think it's 100, we could say 100, 200, 300, 400, oh, 500. So it is each interval right here represents 100 grams, okay? So maybe let's say you thought it was 10 grams for each one of these intervals. You could have counted around by tens and then you would have gotten down to where it says 500 and you would have only been at 50. So you could have said, you know what? I need to think that those intervals are going to be higher than that, higher than 10. So we counted around by hundreds and we got to 500 where it was labeled 500. So each interval, one interval represents 100 grams. Let's count the grams on this scale to find one kilogram. So let's go around and count by hundreds. So 100, count with me, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 
900. And then we get all the way around and that's 1,000. So 1,000 grams equals one kilogram. So even though this scale isn't measuring in kilograms, if that arrow pointed all the way back around to that um, zero on the top, you would watch it go around when you put those um, that fruit on the scale. It would go all the way back around and could end up on that zero again, which would be 1,000 grams or one kilogram. All right, so here's another strategy. We can use mental benchmarks to estimate the weight of objects. So friends, a mental benchmark is just something, mental is like in your mind, it's, it's something that you are thinking and can imagine the weight of something in your mind instead of using a scale. So we're gonna take a look at some mental benchmarks that can ha be helpful to us. Because I don't know about you guys, but I don't always carry around a spring scale with me in my back pocket everywhere I go. So I know that if I can think about what the weight of some of these mental benchmarks feel like in my hand, I can kind of give an estimate of some other, the weight of some other objects. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So here's an example of a mental benchmark, a pineapple. Maybe you've never held a pineapple, but if you have it, next time you go to the store, pick up a pineapple and hold it in your hand. But be careful, they have little spikes on them. Um, so just be careful when you hold it, hold it from the bottom. But you can kind of feel the weight. And the weight of one pineapple is about one kilogram. If I think about the weight of a baseball, that's about 100 grams. The weight of one apple slice is about 10 grams. And the weight of one paper, paper clip is about one gram. So if I'm thinking to myself, you know, I really want to know how much something weighs, I might say, you know, I have a baseball and I have a hockey puck. Well, you know what? I think those kind of feel about the same weight. So I could say that I know that a baseball weighs about 100 grams. So maybe a hockey puck weighs about 100 grams. Okay, so we can kind of use that as an idea to help us in our mind. So we're not having to take out a scale to kind of estimate the weight of objects. We can use these items to help us. All right, so can you think of something that weighs about one kilogram? Remember about a pineapple. Think about just stuff that you have around your house. I know when I'm thinking about this, I'm kind of looking around my house to see like things that I think might weigh about one pineapple, right? So instead of just saying one kilogram, we're thinking about like a pineapple weight. So I want you to pause the video and just think of at least one thing that weighs about one pineapple or one kilogram, and then we'll share some together. All right, friends. So here's some things that I came up with. I came up with a dictionary, like a small dictionary. These two things of ice cream. Oh, they're so delicious. And those are like two of my favorite flavors. Yummy. But they weigh about one kilogram. And then your shoe and a water bottle. Okay. So these are some ideas. Maybe a water bottle might be a great mental benchmark for you or your shoe, because those are things that you're used to maybe seeing all the time. So if those mental benchmarks work better for you, you can totally think about those instead too. All right. So now can you think of something that weighs about a hundred grams? So I want you to pause the video and I want you to think of at least one thing that weighs about 100 grams or about the weight of a baseball. So pause, Think about that and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's some things that I came up with. And maybe you came up with something different, but maybe you didn't. I love to bake, so I thought about a stick of butter. I thought about a lemon, an apple, maybe a bar of soap. So those are all kind of things that like I personally use on a regular basis. So it's easy for me to think about the weight of those objects when I'm trying to estimate the weight of something. Okay, so maybe you came up with some of those too. Now, can you think of something that weighs about 10 grams or one apple slice? So I want you to pause the video, think about that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, so here's what I came up with. Some glasses, maybe sunglasses. It doesn't have to be like reading glasses. It could just be sunglasses. Your pencil. You guys all know what a full pencil feels like. Not like the itty bitty ones by the time they're almost <laughs> done and used up. But a new pencil weighs about 10 grams. And then also two nickels weigh about 10 grams. 
All right, so here's the last one. I want you to come up with something that weighs about one gram, which remember is about a paper clip. So that's super light, right? Paper clips aren't heavy at all. So pause the video, come up with one thing, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So here's some things that I came up with. A dollar bill. That weighs about one gram, right? It's bigger than a paper clip, but they weigh about the same. A penny, and then maybe like a piece of gum, a piece of bubble gum. Okay, so those are just some objects that weigh about one gram. So when you're measuring something, you know, you could say to yourself, you know, I really want to know how much that pack of sticky notes weighs. Well, I, I think maybe it weighs a couple, the same as a couple pennies. So I might say maybe five pennies. Well, I know that a gram is about, one gram is about... The, the weight of a penny. So maybe my pack of sticky notes weighs five grams. I can kind of estimate that in, in my mind. Okay, so that's why we have those mental benchmarks to be able to help us. If we don't have a scale, we can use these objects to help us kind of estimate the weight of objects. All right, so sweet, you guys did a great job using mental benchmarks to estimate the weight of objects. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.